Let's say your professor surprises you with this derivative problem on your next exam, and because you didn't know the shortcut you're about to learn by the end of this video, you ran out of time. See, the normal way we find this derivative is in the video I show you above, and there's nothing wrong with that, but when you're in a time crunch in your AP exam, it's helpful to recognize the quick tips and tricks. Now, normally, for a problem like this, students don't remember the fact that sometimes adding to an equation can make it faster to solve, and specifically, making it a function where you have natural log of y on the left-hand side, and not just y by itself. But they're afraid to do it because after taking the natural log of both sides, many students recognize that A, either they don't know how to take this derivative on the left because they haven't learned implicit differentiation, which is what I'm gonna show you here, and B, if the teacher didn't specifically ask to use that method, they would rather not because they think the other way is simpler. But I'm gonna make it super simple for you to understand here because implicit differentiation is a lot easier than you think. What I wanna first do is on the right-hand side, because we have the natural log at x at dx, I wanna bring the x outside of the natural log because that's a special property of logarithms. And now we've got natural log of y equals x natural log of x. So the method I like to use for implicit differentiation might look a little cumbersome and not exactly how you learned it, but it's a safe bet that always works for me. I'm gonna take d over dx of both sides of the expression. And for each side of the equation, I'm gonna put parentheses around what I saw. And what I wanna do is, Start with the left-hand side. Because you have natural log of y, I want to treat the letter y that I see here as the control variable, almost like we normally do when we see an x, but in this case, it's a y. So we know the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, but in this case, we're going to make it 1 over y. And then we got to figure out what to do with this differential d over dx, but I'm going to show you that in a bit. Okay, on the right-hand side, this should be pretty straightforward because all we see are x's, and we know that for x natural log of x, we need to simply use the product rule. But then we also got to figure out what happens to this d over dx term. So let's dive into this further. On the left-hand side, like I told you, the derivative of natural log of y, where we're going to treat y as the control variable here, will give you 1 over y. And then for its differential, what I like to think about is treating it almost like a fraction, which is loose terminology. But think of the top of it now having a y, because we're basically saying we treated y as the control variable. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm going to take the derivative of x natural log of x using the product rule, giving me natural log of x plus x times 1 over x. And if you remember, we basically take the derivative of the left term times the right plus the derivative of the right term times the left. And then now for its differential, same idea, but now on the top, because we were dealing with an x as the control variable, I'm going to use dx. Now, it might look a little bogus to you to have dx over dx, but I want you to think of this as the following. The rate of change of the differential x with respect to itself is simply 1, right? So we're going to go ahead and just knock that out. And this becomes simpler to work with. Now we're going to have 1 over y dy over dx equals natural log of x plus 1. And it still might look a little confusing on the left, but remember, though, that the main idea of a derivative, implicit or not, is we want to find an expression for dy over dx. So go ahead and just multiply both sides of the equation by y, and this is going to give you a new expression, y times the natural log of x plus 1. But hold on a second, this can't be your final answer because you have an expression here in terms of the original y, but it needs to be in terms of x. But we remember that y equals x to the x, so when you substituted it on the right-hand side here, you're now going to have this expression that's your answer. But also, I want you to recognize one thing that's really important, right? When we were dealing with this, this was an easier case where we had natural log of y equals the x times the natural log of x, where when you're taking implicit differentiation here, the letter y was by itself on the left and the letter x was by itself on the right. Now, many of you might be wondering, what do I do in cases where I'm dealing with, say, x squared plus y squared? They're, they're on one side of the equation and I got to use implicit differentiation. Well, in that case, you're definitely not going to want to miss this video then.